So if you're still using the 2018 MacBook Pro or similar years in 2025, don't worry, you're not alone and honestly, it can still run great. I'm gonna be sharing with you my top five built-in tips with no expensive upgrades needed or apps. These five tips allow my Intel MacBook Pro to feel faster, cooler, and way less frustrating. Let's have a look. This is my MacBook Pro 2018. I've had it for almost eight years now. And obviously over the years, things start to slow down. So, you know, I'm always trying to test different built-in tricks and I've narrowed it down to my top five to share with you guys today. So hopefully you can take these away and use them yourself and you really will see a difference like it has for me. So there's no download needed. It's all Mac OS tools. And stick around to tip four and tip five where I discuss with you how I've managed to save my battery life and also make my laptop run a lot faster. Let's have a look at the first tip. First of all, using Safari instead of Chrome. You may know this, you may not, but it makes a difference, especially with the Intel chips. Safari tends to run faster and more efficiently than Chrome on Intel Macs, mostly because Apple controls both hardware and the software. Chrome is cross-platform, not fully tailored to Mac OS internals. And the second thing to consider is that Chrome uses a lot more CPU than Safari. And that means that your battery is draining 20 to 30% faster and it is kind of crazy to think that the battery can drain a lot more just by using another browser so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a mini test for you guys today just to show you how Chrome works when I open it up start to play a couple of videos on YouTube how the CPU increases when you're using an app it's making the CPU run faster so when the CPU is busy your Mac starts to get hotter and hotter so you can click command space and search activity monitor if you search Google Chrome helper here you'll see anything that's actively on Google Chrome right now. I barely got anything open. So what we'll do now, we'll go into YouTube, play one YouTube video. And let's see the change in the CPU. So do you see now the Google Chrome helper has increased to 37? Yeah, and the rendering as well, 23. So we've seen an increase from one video playing. Now, let's open up a second video. You'll see the GPU has now increased to 43 on the second video. Now it's moved to 44. So you've seen a drastic shift within just two videos being played. So the average GPU where your laptop can run smoothly is around 30 to 50%. So we're good, we're playing two videos, but that's really not that much. If you wanna up your game and do more on your laptop, if you start to do more than 50 per 60 percent the laptop might start to run slower the fan might become louder and anything over 100 CPU it does mean your Mac will really lag and we will see a difference if your laptop is lagging I definitely suggest using Safari to see the difference tip number two clean up your login items because honestly it makes a big difference you may have stuff set up that's already loading in the background that automatically logs you in as soon as you log into your computer every day or whenever you use it this could be notifications updating content, scripts, playing audio, music. So a quick way to check this is again, search and go to system settings, go down to general, and then go to login items and extensions. So you'll see here, I've only got one that automatically logs in, but also you have allow in the background. So all of these are ticked at the moment. So this has helped me a lot. If you untick ones that are not necessarily needed in the background, it makes a big difference. You know, if you've got butterfly in the background, drop box these are all apps are automatically logging you in when you get it you're probably like why is it taking so long when i log in before we continue guys let me know in the comments what you're currently using it's really just good to know whether you're still with the intel chip you've upgraded to the m series let me know in the comments tip number three check the activity monitor in one of the first tips i showed you how you can check what activity you're doing with specifically google chrome now we're going to look at apps so for example i use CapCut a lot that's for video editing so of course that one is going to show increasingly when it comes to the CPU. So we're gonna have a look how it works if I open it up. So if you go back to the CPU on Activity Monitor, you'll see what apps you're using and what is draining it. This is important because you don't want stuff in the background you don't need. So if you click on the arrow at the top, you'll see CapCut's coming up. That's one that's running the most. You'll see here, CapCut is on 20% and I've not even started editing yet. So you imagine when I start editing for hours, it, that's when it starts to heat up. There's nothing really I can do about it besides be aware that actually, you know, it's an Intel chip, it's gonna warm up regardless, but don't have anything else open when I am editing the video, which I'm fully aware of. But just have a look at that as well. So that's two things to check. Check for Google Chrome if you're using it, as well as any apps that you're currently opening, they're all in activity monitor. So tip number four, manage the heat with the app. So 
you know, it's been quite warm, shockingly, in the UK recently, and you always notice, why is my laptop getting so overheated? It literally is the temperature. It's warm. So if the weather is warm inside or outside, it then makes my laptop heat up. And I'm like, oh, this is why I need to get a new laptop. But realizing, you know, I need to make sure that I'm having it on a flat, ba flat base, first of all, that, you know, I'm in a room that's not overly hot anyway. You know, the most recommended is normally to have a hard service, obviously on a desk, not on a blanket or, you know, sat on your lap. So I'm really excited to show you guys tip number five because it's something so minor but made a big difference for me. So tip number five is about freeing up your storage and disabling visual effects. That's the really important one to remember. If you're not done already, you can click on the Apple button, check your storage, check for any large items, see what you can delete. But part B, the visual effects, right? This made a big difference for me because I thought when I'm opening up apps, why, why is there such a lag when I open up apps? So if you go to system settings, settings to accessibility we want to tick reduce motion and reduce transparency so what does this mean it means that when you do open up apps there are generally is animations you know when you have zoom you don't may not even notice it really there are animations which means it will slow it down when opening certain apps so you'll see maybe you want to open an app it will zoom in zoom out and without all these extra animations your graphics card runs even better i think that one was actually the biggest for me realizing is that really all I needed to do? So my graphics processor is a UHD Graphics 630, which is the obviously one of the older Intel chips, but it's not exactly built for flashy animations. You know, those animations look a lot better on the M1 and M2 chips. That was five tips for you guys. So let's have a quick recap of the five tips. So we've got switching to Safari, makes a big difference, especially when it comes to lag and battery life. Remove login and background apps. Check what's hogging resources. Keep your Mac cool in a smart way. Free up space and turn off any visual effects unless you really do want to have it. Honestly, these small tweaks have really helped my MacBook Pro continue to be as efficient as it possibly can. If you're still rocking the older MacBook Pro like me, then these can definitely help you as well. I hope that my five tips help you guys today. Maybe you knew about them, maybe you didn't, but do let me know in the comments. Give me a like if you did like this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you do want to see more of my content. Lots of reviews you can check out, tech reviews. Have a look at the MacBook Pro 2018 that I've been talking about. Also MacBook Air, Android, and lots more as well. Thanks guys, have fun.